Welcome everyone. You are here with Bright Lights and our Digging Up Dinos Flipside Camp. My name is Renee and I'm the Education Coordinator for Bright Lights. I will be serving as one of your hosts and my friends Miss Lori and Miss Lindsay will also be helping with hosting duties. I want to cover just a few things before we get started, and then I will turn this over to Dr. Dino so the fun can begin. Remember, because we are in a webinar format, we can't see your picture or hear you. However, if you want to ask a question or respond to a question, just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. If you type your question or your comment in the box, we will see it and we can relay it to Dr. Dino or share what you have said. I also want to let you know that we are recording the session and we will have a link in a few days on our YouTube channel to this camp so you can watch it again or invite new people to watch it. Finally, we'd like to thank Black Hills Energy for supporting Bright Lights and sponsoring our Flipside camps this summer. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Dino so that we can begin our adventures as paleontologists. Good morning, Dr. Dino. Good morning, everyone. So glad you're all here. Uh, <clears throat> Like Renee said, uh, today I am Dr. Dino. Uh, if you were with us yesterday, you might have seen uh, Mr. Dills. Mr. Dills went ahead and invited me to uh, this flip side camp to talk to you about paleontology. Um, so what is paleontology? Well, paleontology is a lot like a science. So that's what I am today is a scientist. And we'll talk about what type of scientist really digs into dinos. So we have three words, just like Mr. Dill showed you three words yesterday. Um, yesterday you had herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore. We also have three words we're gonna focus on today. So the first word is bone. And most of us, if not all of us, has probably heard the word bone. Bone is that hard structure within your body. Typically they are white. You see a lot of them around Halloween time, like fake bones lying around. Bones are the physical uh, aspect of paleontology. Um, they're made up of minerals. Um, like I said, they're white. Um, your teeth are like that bone structure. So if you kind of feel your teeth, they're really hard. They're able to uh, cut through food. So paleontologists sometimes find bones. The other word we're gonna talk about is a fossil. Now a fossil might be a bit different um, of a word. Some of you may not have heard the word fossil. And a fossil is more like an imprint. And we'll demonstrate later today what a fossil can look like. And we'll talk about um, how fossils are formed because um, they are a bit different than bones. And both bones and fossils lead us into this world called paleontology. And that is a huge word, paleontology. Paleontology is the science of studying dinosaurs, fossils, bones. Uh, so today and yesterday and tomorrow, we will be what is called paleontologists. We're going to study the dinosaurs and bones and fossils. So if you were with us uh, yesterday, you know that we have a daily dino that we have to find. So Renee, would you take us to the paleontologist lab? Dr. Dino, this is Miss Lori. I will do that. And Perfect. Here we go. Ah, Dr. Dino, I was with you yesterday, or with, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dills yesterday, and last night at dinner, I had a hamburger and asparagus, so I was an omnivore. I was kind of excited to, to think of uh, the fact that I was not just an herbivore or a carnivore, but an omnivore yesterday. Ah, Dr. Dino's getting ready. He's got some bones and he has All some right. There he so, is. Miss Lori, I was here, I heard you talk about your dinner last night and you were really using all of your teeth in order to enjoy that dinner, weren't you? <laughs> I did. I did. I never thought of myself as an omnivore because I, I know I eat meat and some people don't. 
So I, I last night I was thinking, I'm really an omnivore. Mmm, all the food, omnivore. <laughs> all right, so we have our Dino Dig. And like I said, uh, in regular Bright Lights class, you'd be able to dig through the sand and find different bones, but we're going to do a virtual dig. So somewhere hidden in here is a dinosaur. I'm going to do my best to try and uncover the dinosaur. If you see hints or you have a guess on what the dinosaur might be, feel free to put it in the chat and we'll see if anyone knows the dinosaur we have. So right off the bat, I see I have a bone here. That's actually a chicken bone, uh, mm. super small. So we're gonna do some digging. Now, as a paleontologist, you would be out in the heat, digging through the uh, rock, the sand. So there's lots, lots of different tools that you might use. Right now I'm using some uh, brush here, but once we find the dinosaur, we might use more of a toothpick uh, type thing that you see at the uh, dentist to really get in and scrape away any sedimentary rock. And I do see, I think this might be the head of the dinosaur. Oh, the oh it does look like the head of the dinosaur. I wanna be real careful not to break the dinosaur. So I'm gonna keep on brushing here. Dr. Dino, sometimes um, the soil or sand isn't this loose. So yeah. what, would, what would a paleontologist use to get in there and kind of chip away at that without hurting? That is a good question, yeah. So many times a paleontologist might start with a like pickaxe type thing to get past the really hard rock. But mm. once they kind of get to an area where they might see, uh, oh, look, there's a dinosaur fossil or some sort of bone. They're gonna use smaller tools. They might use a spade. They might use oh. uh, a shovel. Um, they might even use like a common rake just to rake past the things. Um, I see. So they have a slew, a big amount of different tools that they're gonna use so therefore they don't hurt that fossil or bone because if they hurt it, there probably isn't another one um, and they might have destroyed or ruined that fossil or bone. Well, it's so, okay. they're so precious. And um, I always think that it must be so exciting when you discover that, when you see the edge of something. All right, so we're seeing some guesses. We have a T-Rex I saw. Mm-hmm. We have a Aranosaurus. Let's see here. I think he might be bit uh Bronchosaurus. Oh, I think you're close there. I'm gonna lift him up here. Oh, there he is. Brachiosaurus. All right, so this dinosaur has a super long neck. Look at it curve around. He has a super long tail. And it looks like he did walk on all fours. So we're going to go back to the uh, main room and we're going to learn what type of dinosaur we have. So Miss Lori, if you'll take us back there. You bet. There we go. Heading back to uh, Dr. Dino's office there, it looks like. There he is. All right, so our dinosaur today, give you a better look here. Like I said, has that long neck, has that long tail, and probably walked on all fours. So let's look into what dinosaur we had today. I'm gonna to share my screen here. Ah. So some of you guessed a Brachiosaurus. If you said Brachiosaurus, you are 100% correct. A Brachiosaurus was one of the larger dinosaurs um, in the dinosaur world. So this is kind of a comparison of what this is a, uh, about the size of a six foot man 
Um, and this is how big that brachiosaurus would have been if it was alive today. Could you imagine walking to school and you just see this giant brachiosaurus? You might be able to like hop on him for a ride to school. He's so big. Dr. Dino, yesterday when we saw the stegosaurus, I was thinking, oh, he has that cool spiky thing on his tail to protect him. And when I saw this one, I thought, oh, I wonder what would protect him. And now I think, well, he's just huge. <laughs> yeah, there were uh, paleontologists have figured out that um, brachiosauruses love to be with friends or other brachiosauruses. They lived in what we call a herd. And so there'd be a bunch of them uh, and so if a T-Rex or a Velociraptor, um, you know, those carnivore dinosaurs, those meat-loving dinosaurs tried attacking a Brachiosaurus, they weren't super successful because they were so big. That tail alone is the size of two semi-trucks right behind one another. It's a That's... very, very long tail. That's so good. here's another picture here. Oh, so, yes. So, you know, it's 26 meters long. It's just super, super long. Like I said, the tail alone is about uh, two semi trucks put together. So next time you're on the highway or in the interstate and you see a uh, semi truck, notice how long that semi truck is. We have now, a question, okay. Dr. Dino. Is a Brachiosaurus bigger than a T Rex? It is. It is a lot bigger than a T-Rex. That is a good question. Yes. Even though uh, T-Rexes, you know, in movies are made out to be this really big dinosaur, T-Rexes really weren't that big. They just had a huge jaw, which made them super terrifying. Mm. Now, it might surprise some of you that if we're looking at the diet of a Brachiosaurus, that actually it ate grass or leaves or any other sort of twig. Now that's a huge dinosaur to be eating that much uh, trees and twigs and grass. Uh, so much though, here's a little fun fact for the Brachiosaurus. Uh, when paleontologists went back and uh, were looking like the insides of the uh, remains of the stomach and what's in there, they kept on finding these larger boulders, um, which are like a big rock. Uh, because what would happen is the Brachiosaurus would swallow boulders or rocks after it had a meal to help the digestion in the stomach. So uh, <laughs> because of that long neck there, it would take forever to get to the, their, its stomach. So it swallows some boulders to help it uh, chew up its food. Wow, that's crazy. Isn't it? It is some... Um, could you imagine after you ate a salad, you just decided to eat some rocks? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that doesn't sound yummy at all. <laughs> uh, if you were with us yesterday, then um, you realize you just sorry, cut, um, do a recall. We had a stegosaurus, which also is that herbivore. But look at the stegosaurus compared to that uh, brachiosaurus. A lot smaller of a mm. dinosaur for sure. All right, so now that we've learned of the Brachiosaurus, we're gonna head back to the dino uh, paleontologist lab to A, oh, we're gonna talk about how fossils are formed, and then we have a book that we'll read to kind of get our brain started on some things. All right. As Dr. Dino heads over to the lab, I was just looking at some of the comments. Someone said that the Brachiosaurus uses their tail. I imagine that's a powerful tail. All right, so we're gonna move our dino hips. So we have our friend, uh, the Brachiosaurus that we just met today. Um, and we talked about fossils and how fossils aren't necessarily bones, because a bone is going to be that physical um, mineral that you can touch and feel, um, and it's not really an imprint. A fossil is going to be kind of more of that imprint type of thing. So here I have this super high-tech uh, gum that I chewed, uh, and this is supposed to um, 
be like mud or sand that you're when you're walking across the street uh, or in the uh, ocean that you might step on um, and leave a footprint behind. So if our brachiosaurus was walking along here and it hit some gum, it would make an imprint. It's going to put its foot really into that mud there because they weighed a lot. And then you take it out. It's going to leave an imprint within that gum or if you were to step in mud. And this would create a fossil like thing if it were to dry and then the dirt might have covered it up. And paleontologists love, love finding different fossils because it tells us um, how it might have walked. It tells us how big the foot was. And it kind of tells us where they lived. Um, in the United States, Montana, the state of Montana, has a lot of dinosaur um, remains there. And in fact, they're still finding some today. Uh, and if you find a dinosaur fossil or bone, uh, you would become rich because they are worth millions of dollars. Lots of museums would be willing to pay you to get that dinosaur bone. So if you find them, you let Dr. Dino know because uh, I wouldn't mind having a million dollars. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Dino, so a fossil, there's no bone in it. It's just from the print of mm -hmm. where it was okay yeah a print or some remains um the bone is going to be the physical um thing that you see at like museums when they put them all together yes. um, so right here in our picture this would be a bone collection because all the bones here but mm -hmm. um on the side here these imprints might be the fossil there's not really a bone there, but there's an imprint saying there was something here, but the bone might have gotten ruined, someone might have took the bone. Uh, we're not quite sure, but we know something lived there. Ah. So this is a great book. Um, if any of you have ever read the Bernstein Bears, um, it's one of my favorite series. This one's about Dinosaur Dig. So I wonder what this book might be about. Hmm. Bernstein Bears, Dinosaur Dig. All right. Brother and sister bear liked to read. They went to Bear Country, bear country Library quite often. They liked mysteries, adventures, sports stories, and lots of other books, too. Well, I'm sure you guys also liked a bunch of different books. One day, brother found a book about dinosaurs. He showed it to sister and they looked at it together. It was very interesting. Oh, I wonder if any of you have dinosaur books that you read. I know I have a lot of dinosaur books. Brother and sister really liked all those dinosaurs. Learning about them was exciting. They liked their long, ferocious teeth and they like their long, ferocious names, like Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Triceratops. What I like about this book is it kind of helps you sound out the word, Tyrannosaurus. Stegosaurus. Triceratops. That's one of the trickiest things in paleontology. And being a paleontologist is figuring out how to say those names. Stegosaurus, ooh, that was our friend from yesterday. Stegosaurus had spikes on its tail. It could use them to whack big meat eaters like the Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus, who had long, ferocious teeth. So it looks like it's battling an Allosaurus which was a meat eater. And we can tell because look at those claws, look at those sharp teeth. Mm. The difference in the size of their heads is very significant. Yeah, yeah. The Allosaurus, meat eater dinosaurs needed a bigger head. So when they clamped down their jaw, it would have more of the uh, meat in it. While if you were talking about a Stegosaurus, they don't really need that big of a head. 
In fact, they had more of a beak in order to get the grass. Hmm. Triceratops had sharp horns on its head. It could use them to poke any other dinosaur who messed with it. The best part was they lived long, long ago, so you didn't have to worry about them getting you. Oh, thank goodness. I would hate to run into a Triceratops. That might be kind of scary. But look how he defended himself. Is he had those long horns. He had a horn on the middle here, kind of like a rhino. Mm. Mama and Papa were delighted that brother and sister had this wonderful new interest and Honey thought it was okay too. They all went to the Berzonian Museum to see the dinosaur skeletons. They were ginormous. Brother and sister really liked those dinosaur skeletons. So when you go to a museum, and like in Lincoln, Nebraska, we have Morrill Hall, which is a great place to go to see some dinosaur bones. While they were at the museum, Professor Actual Factual saw them and stopped to say hello. He was the head of the museum and an old friend of the Bear family. I see you two cubs have been bitten by the dinosaur bug, he said, smiling. The <laughs> dinosaur bug, said brother. What kind of bug is that, asked sister. She imagined a huge prehistoric insect. Professor Actual laughed. I just mean that you've caught an interest in dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. Once you've caught that bug, it's hard to get rid of. I know. I've got it too. Oh, so sister thought it was going to be looking a bug like that. That's kind <laughs> of a scary looking bug. Oh my gosh. In fact, said the professor, would you like to see my latest dinosaur project? Would we ever, said sister. You bet, said brother. Then just follow me, said the professor, leading them outside and to the rear of the museum. They came to a big open pit in the ground. Mounds of earth were heaped up everywhere. Down in the pit, scientists were at work carefully digging away. Look at all those scientists, those paleontologists. Mm. I wonder why they all have hats on. Hmm. I wonder why they might have hats on. Hmm. They're outside. Hmm. Mm. I wonder, Miss Lord, if they wore hats so the sun doesn't hit them as hard. They don't get sunburnt as much being out there. What do you think? Yeah. I think so. I think the hat you have today, Dr. Dino, would keep the sun off your face and your neck. Mmm, yes. Extra yeah. special hat. It is hot outside. Very hot outside. What's all this, said Papa, scratching his head. This is my latest dinosaur dig, explained the professor. We have discovered a large group of dinosaur fossils right here behind the museum. We're digging them up so that we can study them. Wow, said brother. Did you find a Tyrannosaurus? Well, no, said the professor. But we did find a Spinosaurus skeleton. Spinosaurus was a fierce dinosaur, almost as big as a Tyrannosaurus, and it had a huge fin on its back. Can we see it? asked sister. Of course, said the professor. Right this way. Oh, so we're going to see a Spinosaurus. I don't think I've seen a Spinosaurus skeleton before. They all climbed down the ladder into the dinosaur dig. Now here's the Spinosaurus skeleton, said the professor. It's the first one in this area. Wow, we said brother. It's humongous. And over here, said the professor, there are many other fossil reptiles. As he led them through the dig, brother and sister imagined all the prehistoric creatures as they would have looked when they were alive. Oh, so as they're looking at the dinosaur remains, you have a Spinosaurus with that great big fin on the back. 
you had a Corythosaurus, and you had an Angliosaurus. Wow, so many different types of dinosaurs. They saw another fin-backed reptile, the Dim Dimetrodon, a giant long-necked Apachosaurus, a flying reptile, pterodactyl, and a giant sea reptile called the Mosaurus. Mosa ooh, that's a hard one. Mosaurus. It was bigger and more ferocious than any shark that ever swam in the seas. So this is what they're talking about, that super dangerous uh, sea dinosaur. This is oh, one of the long neck dinosaur. Yeah, the, the little tag next to the Mosaurosaurus or, is helpful. Remember we were talking about how it's helpful to pronounce it because I don't know that I could do it without it. Yeah, I know. Mosasaurus kind of just flows off the tongue like water, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but look at all of these different types of dinosaurs. Wow. Thank you for the tour, Professor, said Mama, as they climbed out of the dig. That was very interesting. Yeah, said Sister and Brother together. It was awesome. On the way out of the museum, they stopped in the museum shop to get more books and some dinosaur models and kits. Wow. Back home, brother and sister soon had every inch of their treehouse covered with model dinosaurs. There were dinosaurs and reptiles fighting on the stairs, eating on the table, sleeping on the sofa, and swimming in the bathtub. There were even some dinosaurs made of clay inside the refrigerator. Oh. Brother kept them there so they wouldn't get soft and squishy. It seemed to Papa and Mama that dinosaurs were everywhere. That was kind of what my place looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those dinosaurs, have them in the fridge, have them in the bathtub. They have them on the table. They're just laying on the floor. They're on the couch. They're by the lamp. They are on the stairs. So many dinosaurs. Before dinner, before dinner, Papa headed for his favorite easy chair with the evening newspaper. Oh, Papa, said sister as he started to sit. Yo! Papa <laughs> yelled, jumping up. That's my setup of the Jurassic Age, Sister explained. Sister, said Papa, I'm delighted that you and Brother have this wonderful new interest. But, he said as he carefully moved Sister's dinosaurs off his chair, the Jurassic Age will just have to settle for the coffee table. And with a sigh, he sat down to read his paper. I'm curious, now the Bernstein Bears had a lot of dinosaurs they talked about. In chat, I want you to go ahead and type your favorite dinosaur. What's your favorite dinosaur? And maybe you don't have one. Maybe by the end of this week, you will. Professor Diana, I don't have a favorite dinosaur yet, but I'm planning on having one by the end of camp this week. Perfect. I'm super excited. I always, every year, it kind of goes back and forth. Um, and we're going to go, we're going to stick at the paleontologist lab so we can do a craft here. Ooh, Spinosaurus, Raptors, a T-Rex. I always go back and forth. I think the Triceratops has my heart this week. I don't know what it is, but I think it's also because it's super easy to say. Ooh, T-Rex. Okay, so we are going to look at a craft here. Ooh, a velociraptor. Those are ferocious dinosaurs. Uh, the first craft we have today is a dinosaur digger. You get to build your own dinosaur. So maybe if you don't have a favorite dinosaur, you might be able to build your own dinosaur. 
So on the Bright Lights webpage, uh, there is a link to print off a page that looks like this. And what we're going to do today is we are going to use um, construction paper. I have used uh, black construction paper just so you can see it a bit better, but it does not have to be black. It could be brown like the earth or green like the grass or maybe just your favorite color. It doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these out and form a dinosaur. Now your dinosaur might look a bit different than my dinosaur. Um, and I've kind of already started cutting out some of the pieces. So if you want to, if you have this and you want to do it with me, um, that's fine. You certainly do not have to um, because you can do it later on. Um, you can kind of just listen and see what we're doing here. But I'm going to finish out cutting these two uh, bones um, because I wanted to point out I know there's a darker line and some of you might think you have to cut along this dark solid line here, but what you really want to do is cut along that dotted line. Um, we do that because it's a bit easier to cut out um, because I don't know about you, but I don't have great cutting skills. So cutting that little groove right there would not be a good time with, uh, for Dr. Dino, that's for sure. So we kind of want an outline of all of those pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means because what this is, is what some paleontologists get to do when they find random bones and remains in the earth is that they don't know what part went where. Um, they kind of just take a best guess. They do some research and they kind of just form them together. So that's what we're going to do uh, today, is we're just gonna take a best guess. So oh, Dr. as I look, go Dr. ahead. Dr. Dino, there's two, like on the sheet, there were two groups of bones, mm -hmm. two separate dinos, is that right? Yes, yeah, so there are two sets. Um, so the set that I just cut out, or the one, the one down here, um, I'll show you what this one might could look like, but there are two sets of dinosaur um, remains. You can use, um, this one looks like it's just a larger dinosaur compared to this one. Um, so kind of just whatever you want to use. If any bones are like, ooh, I like this bone collection better than this one, then you certainly could. Or you could be a super lucky paleontologist and maybe they're really close by one another. So you maybe want to do both of them kind of your choice as you're building your own dinosaur. Oh. What's nice about this is there's really not a wrong way to do it, which is my favorite projects. So when we're doing it here, I'm going to examine the bones I have. And I noticed this one looks like it's the head of the dinosaur. So I'm going to probably use the head of the dinosaur and I might scoot these across here and I might set it just right there. Maybe that's where I want my head. Your head could be over here. It could be over here. Maybe you think it should go right there. Wherever you think it should go, you can put it wherever you want. Now, as I'm looking at the other dinosaur bones we have here, I noticed that we have a shorter neck bone right here. I'm going to show it to you all. It's kind of a shorter neck bone. At least I think it might be a shorter neck bone, but you as scientists might believe it might be something else. But since I believe it's going to be the neck bone, I'm going to go ahead and just set it right here because I think my dinosaur had a super long neck. So we're going to just put it right there. As we keep on going, we're looking through our dinosaur bones like a paleontologist. And, you know, I'm starting to see the rib cage I feel might have to come next. So I'm going to put the rib cage right there. Hmm. 
and that means it's its uh, legs are probably somewhere close by. And so I have a couple of legs I can choose from hmm. as I'm looking here. Uh, has a little hand right there, a little hand. So here we have some legs here. And you know what? I really think that maybe my dinosaur had long back legs. So I might save that one for the back. But these two front ones, I might use as the front here. And once again, you might design your dinosaur something totally different. But I think, you know what? My dinosaur probably had shorter arms. Okay. So, and some of the bones, even Dr. Dino isn't quite sure what they are like this bone or this bone. Hmm. hmm, but I think that maybe, maybe this could have been a connection between the rib cage and its lower half. So I'm gonna kind of just connect the dots here and what I think might be, because who knows, this could also be a spike in its body we're not quite sure. And even paleontologists, when they put things together, they don't really know how it goes. It's kind of just a big old puzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and put the back parts on. So I think, well, this might be the leg to it. Mm. Probably has a long leg back here. We'll see if we can make it here. Hmm. Do you need to use all of the pieces, Dr. Dino? You do not need to use all the pieces. And some oh. of them, you might think, you know what? This is probably to a different dinosaur. Yeah, so they could have been close. Yeah. So as we're putting it together, maybe you think, hmm, this is, might be the tail. It had a super long tail. Maybe it's like a, a baby brachiosaurus. We don't really know yet. So and there I, could be missing pieces, I suppose. There could be missing pieces. And a lot of times there are missing pieces. In fact, sometimes when you go to a museum, uh, the structures or the dinosaurs that you see either have fake pieces in there or they're missing pieces. Um, so that's why it's not a full skeleton because it's super hard and super rare to find a full skeleton dinosaur because of mm -hmm. everything that could happen to it. So I might say that these pieces of the dinosaur are extra. This mo looks more like a fossil here, this um, imprint. It kind of oh. looks like that of where it might have stepped on. So it might be more of a fossil. Hmm. So I'm going to brush those aside here. And once I have a layout of what I think my dinosaur might look like, I would go ahead and just glue it on to where I want the construction paper. So here's another one that I did earlier. And this is with the first uh, set of dinosaurs. So using this section of bones, I created what I call the uh, Dogosaurus, um, because I think it kind of looks like a long dog. Uh, mm -hmm. So as I'm creating my own dinosaur, I was like, you know what? I bet you this dog, Asaurus, has a longer tail. It probably walked on all four legs. Um, we don't really know, but that's the fun in being a paleontologist is you get to kind of create your own things and then name it if no one else has discovered it. So how fun is that? That's really fun. All right, so that's all that's on the Bright Lights web page if you need to print off those things. Um, right now, we are going to go back to the main room. Um, we're going to look at a video that's going to dive deeper into fossils and bones. I was just working on my um, dinosaur and I don't know why, but I must have cut all of it out and now I have six left. All right. So, like we talked about, uh, you could 
create your dinosaur however you want, which is the glory in it. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at uh, this guy here. A video that's going to talk about paleontology. We're just practicing our best dinosaur roars. If you met my friend Dino before, then you probably know he's crazy about dinosaurs. He loves going to museums to see their bones, reading books about them, and even pretending to be them. Wouldn't it be cool if you could spend all day thinking about dinosaurs, trying to figure out things like, what did they look like? Or what did they eat? And do they like to play too? For some people, their job is exactly that. But this special group of scientists doesn't just study dinosaurs. They learn about all kinds of things that lived a really long time ago, including reptiles, mammals, plants, and even teeny tiny bacteria. These scientists are called paleontologists. <laughs> Now you probably noticed that the kinds of dinosaurs that you see in museums aren't alive anymore. I mean, you don't have to worry about bumping into T-Rex at the grocery store. That's because they're extinct. They died out millions of years ago. So for paleontologists to do their job, they have to look for clues that dinosaurs and other extinct animals left behind. Luckily, they left us plenty of clues. They're fossils. Fossils are the remains of animals and plants from long ago that slowly became preserved in rocks. Fossils can be of animals' bones, teeth, and shells, or the imprints of old leaves. Or they can be rocks that hold other clues to what life was like in the past, like an animal's footprint or even their fossilized poop. Paleontologists use all of these kinds of fossils to find out more about the history of life on Earth. For example, they've learned about extinct trees and flowers that lived millions of years ago. They found bones of some of the earliest known mammals. And of course, if it weren't for fossils, we wouldn't even know dinosaurs existed. Paleontologists have been able to make all of these discoveries because they're experts at reading the clues they find in fossils. If scientists find enough bones belonging to an extinct animal, like a dinosaur, they can put them together to figure out what that animal looked like. And if they find the dinosaur's teeth, they can figure out whether it ate plants or other animals or both. Just knowing where a fossil is buried can give scientists a lot of information too. For example, if paleontologists come across a layer of rock with a lot of the same kind of dinosaur fossils in it, that might mean that that kind of dinosaur lived in big groups. But before paleontologists can study fossils, they have to find them first. And that means that these scientists get to spend lots of time outside digging in the dirt. First, they go to areas where they think fossils might have formed and start exploring. They keep their eyes open for small bits of bones sticking out of the ground or rocks with cool shapes on them. Riverbeds and hillsides are especially good places to look. Once they find a promising spot, it's time to get digging. Paleontologists use picks, shovels, even big diggers to unearth their finds. If they uncover a fossil, then they take it back to their laboratory to study it. There, they can use cool technology like x-ray machines and CT scanners to see inside the fossil. And they can use computers to help them see what the plants and animals may have looked like when they were alive. And finally, paleontologists spend a lot of their time sharing their discoveries with other people. Lots of paleontologists work with museums and schools so that they can teach people like you and me about fossils that they find. And the fossils are usually kept in museums or universities, so other scientists can study them too. All told, digging in the dirt and dreaming of dinosaurs may look like fun, but paleontologists have a really important job. Together, they're working to solve a huge puzzle, the puzzle of life on planet Earth. Every new fossil is another piece of the puzzle, helping us to understand how plants, animals, and the Earth itself have changed over time. And you know what? Many paleontologists say they got into their special kind of science because when they were kids, they loved dinosaurs just like we do. Yeah! So keep dreaming and practicing your best dino roar. And one day, it could be your job too. And if you'd like us to dig up some more information about anything, just let us know by leaving a comment or emailing us at kids at thescishow.com. Thanks for joining us on SciShow Kids, and we'll see you next time. See you later. All right. So I'm curious if any of you want to be paleontologists when you grow up. Uh, because it is quite the job and they're still finding out facts and um, different types of dinosaurs. We don't know all of them, especially the ones that are in the ocean that might be buried really, really deep down. We have no idea they might even exist. We're going to go back to the paleontologist lab um, to do one more craft here before we start to kind of wrap things up for today.
As we head over to the lab, I was thinking I've decided, I think I know my favorite dinosaur and it might be Stegosaurus because I love that crazy tail. Uh, ooh, Stegosaurus is a good one to like though. That's a really I good might change my mind by Thursday, but right now I love that crazy tail. All right, so we're gonna talk about more about building your own dinosaur, but we're gonna talk about doing it in a different way. Jace made his dinosaur wonderful. Uh, can't wait to see that. What we are going to do, a different way to build a dinosaur, because maybe uh, you want to really just let out your creativity. We're going to use a Q-tips to build a dinosaur. And so it would look something like this. Ooh. Where you might build a dinosaur here. So, if, if you have Q-tips, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty easy and kind of fun because you get to have as much fun with it as you want. But what you would do is you might align your dinosaur bones in a way. So maybe I think, you know what, my dinosaur, it's going to have a big old body. It's going to, and it kind of looks like that let's say and you know what i think my dinosaur probably has some spikes on it because how else would it defend itself so i would just take scissors and i would cut the q-tip in half and you know what i might say it had four spikes on its back because who knows? We don't really know this dinosaur might have existed. It might not, but we are the paleontologist today. So we get to have a say. Because maybe I think it kind of looks like a spiky turtle. Mm. So I might also go, all right, so I have the body. I have the spikes. That's how it's going to defend itself. I'm going to give it a neck here. So I might give it a neck. While you're doing that, Dr. Dino, I just would remind our um, paleontologist friends that we would love to see your dino. If you can have a parent or a grown up, um, go ahead and take a picture of it and post it on our Facebook page. We would love to see it. Maybe you, a picture of you holding it would be awesome. But we'd love to see your dino from today or maybe you made the clothespin dino yesterday. We'd love to see that too. Perfect. Yeah, I'm sure there would be so many, and I'd love to see the variety of dinosaurs because I am willing to bet most of them probably don't look the same. And that's perfect because like we talked about, paleontologists don't really know what dinosaurs look like, even the color. So when we start coloring dinosaurs, it could be really any color because we don't know what color the brachiosaurus might have been or the stegosaurus might have been. We just kind of take our best guess. What I'm doing right now is I gave it a tail because I, I like dinosaurs with tails. I don't know, they're kind of just fun. Sometimes I wish I had a tail. <laughs> so I gave it a tail. It's also gonna defend itself that way. And so with the head of the dinosaur, there are a couple things you could do. Um, you could draw your head. Um, and I'm going to do that here. You could also make a head with your Q-tips. Uh, if you wanted to cut and form a head like that, you could do it that way too. Um, or you could go and um, print off a picture, dinosaur skull, or maybe you have an extra skull from uh, the sheet that's on bright lights you could use. It's really up to your own imagination now, Mr. Jill's is going to try and draw my school because I don't think I could make it with um, Q-tips. So I think it might have a pretty big forehead. It's a pretty flat forehead. I think that maybe it came down and it had a more of a boxier looking head, gave it a mouth. Because I'm picturing it's kind of like a prehistoric turtle. What I'm thinking it, my dinosaur is going to look like. Oh. I'm going to give sharp teeth though because it might have lived in the ocean but it ate other fish. That's what I'm thinking. Going to draw a little head there. 
So there is my dinosaur. I could go back and add legs. Like I might give it some legs here. That way it might walk. Mm, I don't really like those big long legs. It's kind of a, if it's gonna look like a turtle, we're gonna give it oh. little stumpy legs. I like so, the spikes on the back of that, Dr. Dino. Aren't they fun? It really defends itself. Now I, do you think my dinosaur would have moved quickly or slowly if it had little tiny legs? Hmm. Well, mm. body with little legs, that's a lot to carry around. I'm going to guess slow. I would also go slow. I bet you it was slow, but that's probably why it has the shell on the back to protect itself <clears throat> if like a T-Rex came and attacked it. Yeah. So this is another craft. And once you get it all laid out, then I would go back and glue it um, with either a glue stick or Elmer's glue, um, which is what I did on this one. Mm. Okay. One of our friends, Leanna, said she thinks it would go slow too. I think she's right. I think it'd be a really slow looking dinosaur. And if I were to go back and name this dinosaur, like the paleontologist we are, I might call this the, ooh, we could even call it the slow asaurus. Oh, I like it. The slow asaurus. So we know it moved slow because it's in the name. I like your guys' thinking there. So this is just one other craft that you can do as you're making dinosaurs today because you guys are paleontologists. You guys are scientists. So we're gonna go back to the main room. I'm gonna show you uh, something that you can also do later today on uh, the virtual classroom. And then we'll kind of wrap things up for today. Sounds good, Dr. Dino. I'm just putting the finishing touches on my Q-tip dino. I'm still making decisions, so I'm not going to glue mine down yet, so I can't hold it up. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to the virtual classroom here. I'm going to share my screen. So uh, a link to this classroom is on brightlights.org. Um, it's labeled uh, Mr. Dill's virtual classroom, I believe. Um, when you get here, you're going to hit present. If you hit present, it's going to turn into kind of like a website that you can then interact with. Um, so yesterday we talked about how you can click on the moving dinosaur for a dinosaur song. Um, if you click on Mr. Dills, it will tell you more about Mr. Dills. If I hit this door, if I click the door, it's going to take me to a new room. And if I click the Ankylosaurus, it's going to show me a coloring page I could do. Um, if I click the Allosaurus, it's going to take me to some online games that I can do that are dinosaur themed. And if I click this door over here to the right again, it's going to take me to a brand new room. And some of you might have even explored this already. But we have the Stegosaurus, the Triceratops, the T-Rex, or the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and the Brachiosaurus. If I click any of these dinosaurs, it's going to take me to a video that is going to tell me more about them. Most of them are like kind of songs that they like to go with. So if I click, I'll just show you a demonstration. If I click this, uh, let's go with the Brachiosaurus since we learned about him today. If I click on him, it's going to take me to a video that's going to talk about the- This uh, is Kyle. He invented one wheel. It's going to take me to a video after this commercial uh, about the uh, Brachiosaurus. So just some extra things that you can do tonight. So once again, that's what this uh, room is all about. And if you wanted to go back, you can um, hit the previous slide and it will take you back to this room. Perfect. Well, I will then end our day 
uh, with a joke because we've learned a lot. We've learned what paleontology is. We learned what a bone and a fossil uh, can be. We learned about the Brachiosaurus. We learned that paleontologists still are discovering different dinosaurs every day. We learned that if you have a dinosaur fossil in your um, backyard, you might dig one up. You could be a millionaire because they are worth a lot of money. So before we leave today, here is my joke to see if anyone knows what it is. I think Jace was the one who got my joke last uh, yesterday. So here it is. What do you call a sleeping dinosaur? Mm. What do you call a sleeping dinosaur? My first thought is sleeposaurus, but I don't think that's right. That's a good guess, Miss Lori, though. That is a good guess. <laughs> hmm. Sleeposaurus. Oh. <laughs> I think everyone likes that answer. I like that answer. It's kind of better than the actual answer I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So a sleeping dinosaur, and you could tell this joke to your friends and you'd be the coolest kid on the block. Um, we call a dino snore. Oh, oh I like that. <laughs> That's better than Sleeposaurus. A dino snore is what you call a sleeping dinosaur. Good one, Dr. Dino. Perfect. Well, it has been a blast being here today. I'm so thankful Mr. Dills invited me to come and share my knowledge because uh, I think we are going to have a lot of paleontologists in the future. I think all of you could be an excellent scientist. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Dino, for visiting with us today, and even your, uh, your joke. I was shaking my head. I don't know. Boys and girls, if you have any good dinosaur jokes, make sure that you uh, send those to us uh, or have them ready for tomorrow. But until then, we want to thank you for being with us. Um, I hope you had a great time with Dr. Dino and Miss Lori. You learned what a paleontologist does, and you were able to create your own fossil. So I hope that you can take that and have some fun this afternoon. Remember to um, go visit the um, page that Dr. Dino shared with us. You can do some extra activities. And then we will be back here again tomorrow at 10 o'clock with more Dino Facts and Fun. Hopefully some jokes from you guys. And I bet we learn about a new dinosaur. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.